Hi friends, welcome to Can We Talk, where we review the shenanigans on these reality, not so reality shows, talk about business, business tips, and any tea going on in these streets. Grab your snacks, a drink, pull up a chair, and let's talk about it. Also, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss conversations going on in here because I really want to talk to you. Share the video and light up the chat with your thoughts. Respectfully, please. Now, girl, can we talk about season six, episode 16 of Love and Marriage Huntsville? Innocent until proven Kiki? Baby. So this second half started out with Crime Stoppers being on the news down there in good old Huntsville, Alabama. And they had Kiki Jabbar's face plastered all over the TV screen. So of course, you know, there are going to be multiple conversations amongst the collective and Kiki's going to be the big news this show and possibly for this season, right? And then they go to one of the messiest people on the show, Miss Tiffany. So when they go into Tiffany's house, Tiffany is breastfeeding baby Ace. And that baby is greedy, honey, because he is all up on that booby. He getting it in. You hear me? He is not coming up for air. And when he pops loose from that tit tit, he is trying to get back on there in a hurry. Okay? So... Mel comes to the door, Tiffany lets her in, they go to the table, they sit down, and Mel is doing what Mel does, honey. Mel is eating her something. Mel is going to eat if she don't do nothing else. She's going to eat and make some crazy faces if she does not do anything else. Anyway, Tiffany immediately goes in to talk and mess about Kiki talking about her being in the news, about her stealing from Home Depot, and wanting to know, what are we doing with our brand? And looking at Melody like, what are we doing with our brand? And I'm like, really, Tiffany? You're worried about your brand because Kiki was allegedly caught stealing from Home Depot. Tiffany is a, I mean, Kiki is a woman that you do not like, you do not hang out with outside of being forced to on the show, but you do willingly hang out with Martell the man accused of revenge P allegedly on his ex-wife. Is this what we're doing this season? Really, Tiffany, is this what we're doing? Anyway, Mel immediately goes into her bag of crazy looks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ace is getting it in on that boob, honey. His little hand is all balled up tight and he is like going to town. And we get back to Mel. She's making all these faces because Tiffany is going in. And she is pleading her case. Honey, Mel is no dummy. She knows what y'all she know what y'all help us be up to with the gossiping, trying to pull her into the mess. She also knows how these messy producers and editors are and the sound bites that they are looking to get for her from her. And she is having no parts of it, okay? No parts of it. <laughs> I am so proud of Mel. Mel has definitely matured from when the show first came on because Mel was a messy little something, honey. She was messy. She was all about the mess. But after going through what she's gone through with her uh, marriage, the infidelity, the outside child, the being stalked and harassed and just all kind of unnecessary bull crap that she has experienced with her ex-husband you can definitely see the spiritual growth that Mel has gone through she has transitioned from the person she was um, not just business wise but spiritually she has definitely grown and she's so much higher than the mess that happens on this show and she carries herself as such. So kudos to you, Mel. Kudos to you on your growth. Kudos to you on the blessings that, you know, Yah is bestowing upon you because of your obedience. So hand clap. Good, 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 good. I'm so proud of you. Anyway, 
Mel politely gathers Tiffany and her mess at her own table and says, well, you know, you can't believe everything that comes across the TV screen. And Tiffany, <laughs> she's like, absolutely, but it's on the news and the police are involved. So Tiffany, how many times have black people been falsely accused of a crime? Hmm? I'll wait. She's like, I believe this is the first time I've ever known anyone on Crime Stoppers. And it's like, you know, you cannot be new and doing stupid stuff like this around town. Girl. Mm-mm. Mm, Tiffany. Again, I say, you know Martell Holt? His stupid butt may not have made it on Crime Stoppers back in the day, but attempting to steal an ATM machine mm, is definitely a Crime Stopper offense. Allegedly, okay? And Tiffany's still trying to get Mel caught in a bag with her mess. But Mel has been playing this game long enough to get to not get caught up in Tiffany's uh, web and to tarnish her brand. Uh, you get that, Tiffany? Mel won't let you tarnish her brand by talking about Kiki and dragging her through the mud. Okay? <laughs> so Mel just comes back again, classy as she is, and says, Innocent until proven guilty, which is true. Kiki is innocent until proven guilty, and she has not been thus far. So, Tiffany, sit back, be quiet, because quiet is kept with some rumors out there about you. So, um, we'll wait and see what the news is about you too, okay? We're going to give you the same treatment that we give Kiki. We'll wait. Girl, Tiffany is persistent in her mess because she goes on talking about our brand, our brand, and how she tries to control who's around her because she wants um, only good people around her, positive people. Tiffany, your messy behind has not shown up as a good person or a positive person, ma'am. You're messy. You're a pot stirrer. So don't try it. So now that Tiffany realizes that Mel won't get caught up in her web of mess, uh, Tiffany decides that she wants Mel to record a video of her um, inviting everybody to come see Baby Ace. So Mel does a one take. And she tells one take, and we don't we only do one takes around here. So Tiffany did her one take, and they were out. Baby, on the next scene, Courtney pulls up to Black, and Marceau is doing what he always does. Nothing. Sitting there on that phone, texting his behind off is what it looked like. But, quiet as kept, he was probably planning his next solo trip to Africa. Child, the devil. Anyway, the scene flips to Marceau and his confessional talking about he wasn't expecting Courtney, but he can only imagine that Stormy's attack on him had been misdirected and interpreted that he checked her. Child. So, Courtney sits down and he asks Marceau, So, how was the little black expo? <laughs> Marceau immediately makes the mush mouth. Whenever he makes the mush mouth, here it is. You see that? That's Marceau with the mush mouth. Whenever he does that, he's trying to refrain from being a smart A, okay? Anyway, he answers Courtney that it was a good turnout. A lot of people came out, and, a, and they, they got a lot of positive feedback, which is good. Which is good, considering... They were out there scanning, <laughs> as Miss Wanda would say. Not scamming, scanning. You heard me. So immediately, Courtney is like, so a lot of people didn't pay $100, though, huh? From what I heard. And Marceau sips his drink, cuts his eyes at Courtney with the raised eyebrows, mm -hmm, and does that crap-eating grin that he does. I hate when he gets this crappy grin on his face. This is when you know he's about to come out his bag with the slickness. Boo, Marceau irks me. He makes my butt itch, honey. Oh, I can't stand this dude. Anyway, Marceau goes on to say, yeah, one person didn't pay. And Courtney's like, my wife? <laughs> and Marceau, like, apparently. Child, Courtney's like, you know I'm fixing to go ahead and get into it. Marceau, like, okay. <laughs> So Courtney's like, would you trying to check my wife? And Marcel's like, check your wife? Is that what you heard? 
that's what I know. That's what Courtney said back to him. And Marshall nods his head. Sounds good. Ciao. So Courtney was like, you confronted her about $100, about a booth. But ain't nobody said nothing about paying no money. Marceau immediately starts lying, talking about they expected everyone that had a booth, the vendors, the speakers, to all pay. So Courtney was like, so you just saying it, or did you actually have it on paper? And Marceau goes to say, we had it on the internet, on the World Wide Web. Ooh, that, ooh, that ninja. Boy, I promise you, Marceau make you want to scratch the skin off of him, honey. I want to scratch him like a cat sometimes. He get on my nerves, y'all. In case y'all didn't know it, Marceau irks my nerves. But moving on. <laughs> so Courtney laughs and he's like, you can blame that on the web if you want to. You can blame it on the World Wide Web if you want to. And so Marceau's like, have you set up in what would be a quarter of an event? And Courtney cuts him off. He's like, if you're going to charge something, you need to go ahead and charge before you set up anything. Ain't nobody said nothing about no money, which is true. They had all those meetings. They never said anything about any of them having to pay. Because when we go on further into the scene, we're going to see where Kimmy had no idea that there was a charge. And she found out later that they started trying to charge. So Marceau and Tisha full of crap. And Tisha didn't even agree with it at the beginning. She, she was just like, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. But she goes along with Marceau's crap because, you know, child, I don't even know why. I don't know. She just goes along with Marceau's crap, honey, for no good reason. And so it goes on. Uh, Marceau continues to lie, talking about some. He think he think that they said it to everyone, knowing full well they didn't. Marceau decided when he went in there and saw how much space um, Canvas Beauty had took up that she needed to pay. So he immediately went over and started bothering her and asking her for a hundred dollars that she, they had not even discussed at the beginning. And I'm just I'm sorry, but I'm in, I'm under the belief that if somebody is, especially somebody. In um, Stormy's position, who has basically she's she basically made it in this business thing. She's made a lot of money. She has a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot not a lot of uh, success thus far, and failures, which we all have. If you've experienced business, you know of your own, you're gonna have your successes and your failures. You live and you learn, you grow, and you continue to move on. Okay, I'm not trying to bring that girl down about anything that she's experienced because we all gonna have a hard times to go through. Anyway, they never discussed that. But if this woman has all this knowledge that she's bringing, and you ask her to be on your panel to talk. Why are you asking her for a hundred dollars? First of all, have y'all set up everything the way it should have been instead of this fly by night type of thing that y'all decided to have all of a sudden because you wanted to change it from the comeback group to the black expo to try to line your pockets, Marceau and Tisha. And if you would have had your stuff set up right, like let's just say if Mel had been over it, people would have known if there was a fee. If uh, the people were getting paid to talk, which is why Mel wasn't wasting her time giving y'all nothing for free because you dogged out and talked about her for years. And then you want her to come and be the basically really the headliner for y'all show because you know everybody know her down in Huntsville and she was going to get the people in, honey. But she was like, uh, mm -mm, not happening. She ain't working for free and I don't blame her. But had you had your stuff set up properly and they had known the dimensions of their booth size and all that stuff, then she would not have been able to take liberty and spread all out the way she spread all out. She had no prior knowledge or information because you guys did not do your part. You failed on your part. And then when you went in and... First of all, you never put a cap on how many people were coming. They allowed people to keep, you know, um, signing up to then up until the last moment and got all these people for this small space. Then nobody knew how big their uh, booth size was supposed to be. Nobody had heard about paying. I wouldn't have gave you a dime. I would have been just like Stormy. Mm -mm, ain't happening. Nope. You're not going to come at me at no last second with no bull crap because it just sounds fishy. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox. 
and move on because this is going to be a lot longer than I want it to be. <laughs> they had a lot of good scenes, though. It was a lot of good scenes. They came back strong. I'll give y'all that. Love and Marriage Huntsville. Y'all came back strong. And thank you. Please keep up this momentum and don't pause because ain't nobody got time for no sleepy shows. We don't need no filler shows, okay? Because I think that there's going to be another 15 shows or there's going to be a total of 15 shows. Mm. No, please don't. Anyway, let me move on. So, Courtney was like, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so Courtney was like, ain't nobody said nothing about no money, about no $100. But my thing is this. You always coming for women. Always. Marceau, always talking about the women. But see, what Marceau needs to probably do is just worry about Marceau's business instead of women's business. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> When Courtney said that, the look on Marceau's face. You see those eyes? You see those eyes shifting? Yeah, that was Marceau's face. And Marceau gonna try to come back with, you are aware that the Black Expo was my business and collecting from vendors is part of my business. It's not a free event for multimillionaires to come and take up eight sections to sell their products. Apparently asking for payment of service appears to be a trigger word. Child. Courtney made sure to say that whatever you said pissed Stormy off. And it did. And it's not even... It's what you said, but it's also how you said it. Because you know you're a butthole, Marceau. You are a butthole. Anyway, so so Marceau tries to lie and say that. It was a simple like, hey guys, maybe you overlooked this bill. Hey guys, maybe you just made this bill up out of your butt when you walked into the uh, place and saw how much space Stormy took up. Boy, stop playing in our faces, Marceau. Stop playing in our faces. Ugh. But Courtney was like, uh-uh. <laughs> if you got something to say, if, you know, if, if that needs to happen, you need to go get your wife to talk to my wife about the situation. And then Marcel going to come out of his bag talking about, you can't be this much of a protector. Why the hell not, Marsha? Marsha, why can't this man be that much of a protector over his wife? Because you don't like your wife enough to protect her? Child, man, please, Marceau, go sit in the corner. Go. Now, thank you, and don't come out. Golly, he get on my nerves. So Courtney was like, no, nah, if you will let a man talk to your woman crazy, you're a fool, which he is. Mm-mm, don't even try it. And then Marsha go, Marcia goes on to say that Tiffany is very comfortable with handling herself when asked for her bills. And Courtney's like, my wife is too. As Marsha knows, because Stormy read his A down to the ground <laughs> when he tried her with that bull itch. Boy, child, let me hurry up and get off of Marsha and him because he's making my head itch. Anyway, Marsha was like, well, not me, not me. And Courtney was like, if, it's how you did it, though. You know, you, you know how you did it. Stay in Marsha's business <laughs> or men's business. He really said Marcia, but, you know, I'm calling him Marsha because that's what he acts like. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Anyway, Marsha goes on to say, what's shocking to me, a guy would come in and say, hey, you should stay out of women's business when you're literally selling hair care products for a living to women. You know what? <laughs> Marsha, you know exactly what Courtney was referring to. You're just being a rump right now. Like you always are. Courtney raises uh, from his lounge back position and he comes forward and starts pointing at Marsha. And he's like, no, I'm talking about business business. You know exactly what I'm talking about, man. Marsha goes on because, you know, he think he's cute. He's like, I think you guys are blowing this maybe a little bit out of proportion. Uh, No, Marsha, you play too damn much. Anyway, Courtney was like, you should have just apologized for the whole thing right then, which he should have. He shouldn't. He, first of all, he shouldn't have never came at her that way. It shouldn't have never been this shysty scanning business. Hey, Wanda J. Blige. <laughs> it just shouldn't have. I mean, come on, man. At some point, 
If you're going to do business, do business right and stop scanning the people. Scamming, scanning. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Again, hey, Wanda. Whew, child, this is too much. It's just too much. So like Courtney said, he should have just apologized. And then Marsha goes on being Marsha. Oh, no, no. There's an apology coming one way. And once it comes, I'll receive it with open arms and I'll forgive. Courtney laughs. And he's like, man, you're crazy. It's the guy that sells women products for a living. Talking to me about women's business. And Courtney was like, nah. But that $100, here goes a tip for that $100 for a water. And he, somebody, he started putting down the money to mine. That's on Marceau. And so Marsha starts counting Courtney's pockets, talking about that's 60, that's 80. And Courtney's like, no, that's her tip. Don't give it to him. And I don't blame him. I hope she did not give him that money. And Marsha, you know, when he finally puts down that last 20, to my, there you go. And Courtney walks out saying, I got too many millions of dollars to worry about a hundred dollars which he does it's like you so childish marcia you are so childish and so desperate where's that house hello when you gonna do some work hello when is scope going to do what scope is supposed to do instead of scaring all these people marcia anyway <laughs> so the next scene goes to Kimmy and Tisha. This was another aggravating scene. Um, and it, uh, I ain't gonna say it could have been left out because it was good to see all of the, you know what I'm saying, the different people on here. I think the only person we really didn't see was, um, what's his name? Lou. We didn't see Big Lou. And we didn't see Nell. We saw a flashback of Nell, but we didn't actually see Nell. Outside of that, I think we really got to see all of the other uh, other people in the collective, which was good. So, um, Kimmy pulls up and she gets out at Tisha's house with her pink corduroy jumpsuit on. Uh, Kimmy, don't wear that no more. Mm -mm. I don't, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't like it. I didn't think it was cute on her. Just don't do it, Kimmy, okay? Kimmy pulls up. She gets out, and she's like, this is my first time in a new spot. <laughs> you know, it's cute. It'll do for what they're doing, doing it for. New is always nice, so I like it. Oh, you're talking about shady. Oh, she's so shady, honey. And Tisha hands Kimmy a glass of, I guess, mimosa that she carried from the kitchen to the front door, back to the kitchen. Child, I thought that was something she had been sipping on. She done talked all over the drink. <laughs> and y'all know she has a heavy tongue and can't talk that well. And it's probably spitting all over that drink. And then um, Kimmy grabbed the glass like, oh, okay <laughs> i would have said girl you gonna drink that i'm gonna make me a fresh glass no ma'am no sir no thank you uh-uh nah that's nasty tisha do better do better so kimmy goes on to say how y'all adapting being over here and tisha's like it's still a family of five and just that it's still a three and two basically talking about it's a three bedroom two bath and so I'm I'm thinking, is it Tisha? Is it still a family of five? Because um last season we weren't seeing you and Marsha show up together anywhere. It was always y'all meeting each other with that sideways hug and kiss on the cheek, hey babe, type stuff. But really didn't see y'all together and it's starting out the same way this season. Girl, is it really still a family of five? Or is it a comfortable family of four now in that three-bedroom? Anyway, let me move on. So is Tisha still playing in our faces about this home being built, talking about her mindset is still stuck on the home being built. That's the only thing she sees. Uh -huh. That's probably the only way you're going to see it, too, is in your mind. Child, girl, get out of our face and stop playing. I mean, after all these years, y'all don't even have a foundation laid? Really? Come on. Come on now, I know that there's some delays in um, building homes or new sites and all that stuff, but a foundation should have at least been laid by now. A couple of walls could have gone up 
by now. What are y'all doing? I mean, do, do y'all really own the property? Child, again, probably the only way she's going to see this house being built is in her mind, child. Because Marcel playing in her face. I think they plan, both of them are playing in our face. Ugh. Anyway. So, Kimmy is like, how's it coming? Do you uh, have some timelines for anything? And Tisha's like, uh, no, no, no. And Kimmy like, girl, you're a better woman than me. No, Kimmy, she's a stupid woman, okay? <laughs> Child, uh-uh. Ain't that much patience in the world, no ma'am. Mm -mm. But she's a better woman than me, too, if that's what you're calling it these days. Ain't no way. Marsha would be able to play in my face and keep dragging me out to some empty rock lot with these uh, with some heels and a hard hat on <laughs> for a fake storyline. Nah, Ninja, let's start discussing all of these smoke signals out here about you cheating. Let's get a real storyline story going because I'm tired of playing. I really am tired of playing. And if this is a reality show, let's go on and show the reality because... This, I'm pretty sure they've caught on to it by now. We ain't building no darn house. Girl. Anyway, Tisha quickly switches the subject and asks Kimmy um, how she's doing. And Kimmy informs us that she's done with all her treatments and radiation. It's over. And now the only thing she's facing is multiple doctor's appointment visits. And she's still experiencing being tired. So congratulations, Kimmy, on winning your battle against that demon called cancer, honey. Congratulations. I pray that you stay in remission and that your body continues to heal. I really, really do. Because, whew, that's no joke. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, for that healing of Miss Kimberly's body. Okay. So they quickly move on to the lunch with Tiffany and Stormy. And Tisha's like, I ain't studying them girls. <laughs> and they play the footage of Tiffany uh, saying she felt the Whitlows were left out. And Kimmy jumped her saying, but you weren't. They absolutely were, Kimmy. They were left out. And anyway, Tisha goes on to try to check Stormy on how she responded to uh, Marsha. And Stormy chin checks her back. <laughs> okay? Because Stormy ain't putting up with that foolishness. And so then... Uh, Tisha goes on to trying to bust down Stormy to Kimmy with the neck rolls and attitude, honey. Talking about, first of all, you're not a part of the comeback group. You haven't done anything as she rolling her neck, y'all. Talking about, and now you want to sit up here and criticize everything we're doing. Uh, criticize our organization. Criticize the setup. I was like, who y'all think y'all is? Yeah, that's what she said, who y'all think y'all is. So I guess she's talking about Tiffany and Stormy. And Kimmy was like, I was surprised Tiffany felt the way because, like, we call her uh, when you did the walkthrough. You called her on the phone. So then Tish was like, yeah, she should have said... Uh, I want to speak. She was like, whatever you need me, you know, whatever you need my assistant and let me know it's assistance, but let's move on. <laughs> At the end of the day, I still don't know what Tiffany do for real. Girl, what? You're quiet as kept. None of us know what the hell Tiffany do. <laughs> anyway, Kimmy goes on to say, if somebody paid me a thousand dollars, I wouldn't be able to tell them what Tiffany does. Honey, these are some trifling heifers on here. And then Tisha goes on to say, me either, but that's why she wasn't one of the speakers. But she wasn't left out though, Kimmy, right? That right there proves that she was left out when you jumped at them. But you weren't, you weren't. She was left out. She was. Oh, she was. But it's all good. It's okay. It's okay. Just just tell the truth, honey. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Because every time y'all tell a lie, it pop right back and slap y'all in the mouth. I mean, like, immediately. Not immediately. Immediately. Anyway, so they both played stun about Stormy's energy at the lunch. And now the crap is about to hit the fan because Kimmy asked, how's Kiki doing? Whew. The comment from Tisha when she said, F. I'm not going to say that word. I hope she's not back on pills. That comment floored me. 
y'all how low does this family plan to continue to go on both tv and social media anyway i mean really there should be some line that's drawn in the sand and say we're not going to cross this line you know what i'm saying we may do this this and this but we're not going to do this I, but, uh, apparently there's no limit that they won't cross mm, 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 mm. It's so sad. Anyway, T Tisha goes on to talk about how embarrassing it is that she's on Crime Stoppers. And here is where editing, it kind of takes a little odd turn to me because Tisha says, um, maybe they think they have a case. And then Kimmy replies uh, saying, um, I don't even know how I can help her. You know, Maurice ain't that kind of attorney. Kimmy, ma'am, what kind of attorney is Maurice? Inquiring minds want to know. I definitely want to know. Child, better yet, what does Maurice even do? Does he even have a real job, Kimmy? Does he? Because I really, quiet as kept y'all talking about, we don't know what Tiffany does. We really don't know what Maurice does. We, we hear that he has the little credit um, company. We hear that he... Um, graduated with his Juris Doctorate and that he passed the bar, but we really don't see Maurice ever working. You really don't see any of these ninjas around here working, child, really, except for Mel. You, you see Mel working. Um, child, I see Mel working. I see her packing orders and stuff. That's about it. Y'all let me know in the comments if y'all really see anybody else working. We've seen Martell uh, fake work and go out there and stand around and get in the way and do stuff like that. We've seen um, Tisha fake work and then get put out of her office. Yeah, let me know in the comments, honey, if y'all see if y'all have seen any of these people on here really working. Because I really don't. I really don't. And Tisha, have you gotten an office yet since that dude has left Marceau? Did you, were you able to get your office space back? I just want to know. Answer that in the comments, okay? Anyway, uh, Tisha goes on to say, I think I'm done with reaching out to these girls. All of them. I'm done. Okay. And Kimmy's like, so you're not going to go to Tiffany's thing with baby Ace? And Tiffany's like, oh, I'm going to pray about it. We'll see what God puts on my heart. Ciao. Anyway, so happy to be done with that. <laughs> Next, we move on to Martell and Chris. Now, honey, this was the best part of this doggone episode for me. This was good. Martell is ignorant as all get out, but he is definitely entertaining, honey. He is entertaining. So... Chris comes up to the door, Martel opens the door, and immediately he starts with the bull crap. And he's like, you got your booties? And Chris is like, booties? He's talking about some, you're a realtor, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you should have your booties or whatever. And Chris like, you got some booties? And he's like, no, I ain't got no booties. Anyway, he's telling Chris to take off his shoes. And Chris like, I ain't taking off my damn shoes. <laughs> and proceeds to walk in. And of course, Marceau goes into the confessional and he talks crap like a little Judy behind his back. Um, talking about some, he just feels like, you know, if you're going to be showing houses, blah, 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 that, you know, how he should have booties and stuff like this. Marceau, not Marceau, Martel, or should I say hotel, you are a squatter, honey. You're squatting in this house and you got the nerve to be asking about some goddamn booties. How about packing up and getting the hell out, sir? Anyway. Let me get back on track. Gather yourself, girl. Anyway, Chris comes in and he's like, um, the last time we talked was the last time you subpoenaed me and my wife to come to court. And, baby, you could tell Chris was not happy about that subpoena to come to uh, court. And I don't blame him. And Martell looking stupid like, uh, oh, oh, Ninja, you know what you did. And Chris was like, that's effed up, which it was. And Martell's like, why? And he's like, because that looks like we're on one side, but we're still friends with you and Melody. We're not going to take sides, Martell. We're not going to take sides. Understand that, Martell. They ain't taking no sides, okay? You've been trying to get everybody to side with you. All these other 
Negroes have sided with you. The whole collective basically have sided with you, but Nell and Chris have decided to take a stance and they're not going to do that. So those two, hopefully you won't be able to get, but time as time move on, we'll see. Anyway, um, <laughs> Martel goes on to say, let the, you know, basically talking about something. Well, he wasn't trying to get them aside with him. He was just like, let the truth come out, you know, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we know that's all bull crap and lies because last, um, the first half of the season when he was talking to his mom and everything, he was talking about how she didn't really show up how he wanted her to in court. And he was, uh, in his confessional talking about how his mom didn't show up and Nell and Chris didn't really show up for him in court and blah, 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 blah. Well, it's me, you know, smallest violin in the world. You know how Mark, uh, Mark Hotel does. Y'all know how he does. Let's move on. <laughs> so... Chris is like, you know, the house is due to be sold. And Martel is like, yeah, as soon as I move out. Ooh, ninja. Chris is like, no, not as soon as you move out. And Martel is like, no, you said you can't close until I move out. That's why I'm I'm speeding up to, well, not speeding up. And he go lying he, when you start backtracking and double talking. He's talking about he's been speeding up ever since uh, Chris gave him the 30 days. And Chris was like, and how long has it been? And Martel, like, about 40 days. Chris was like, more than 30 days. And Martel's like, um, yeah. <sighs> Ooh, see how, shall? So Chris was like, uh, the house has been on the market for eight months. And Martel is like, this house has been on the market for eight months? Negro, you know it's been on the market for eight months. Stop playing in Chris's face. Chris is too nice to just come over there and tell you to get your mm and get to stepping. But, honey, you wouldn't be playing up in my face like that. Friend or no friend, don't play with me. Don't come for me. Don't try me. Don't do it. Don't, oh, don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it, Martel. Oh, he plays so much. Just play all day. Just play all day. Don't make no sense. Anyway, Chris is like, mm-hmm, yeah, this house. And so Martel's like, um, I'm saying what you mean, though. What you think he means, stupid? Oh, child. Chris is like, that's how long you've had. And then they flash back. I'm so thankful for these flashbacks because editors, you guys are finally doing your jobs. You guys are finally showing what these other creeps and creep creepers have been up to. Y'all were always trying to throw Melody, throw Melody. And I, I am not a Melo meter, honey. I ain't here for nobody. I'm just here to talk about the show. Um, I like who I like. I don't like who I don't like. Okay? But, honey... Right is right and wrong is wrong all day long in my book. I'm sorry. But anyway, y'all was throwing Melody behind under the bus, sideways, backwards, all kind of ways. And y'all were covering for these other people. But it looks like this season, y'all may have taken some of the um, actual YouTubers advice. And you are actually making the other people have to work a little bit on this show. About time. About God darn time. Anyway, they go to the flashback, and um, Martel starts talking uh, to Chris about the owners wanting to put the house up for sale, and he states he needs to start looking now because his lease will be up in six months. And it, Mar I'm not playing with you, Martel. I'm not I'm not about to play with you. Not today, honey. So Chris goes into his confessional and he's like, Martel is taking advantage of the friendship by continuing to stay in the house. He's looking for special treatment. Um, and from him to allow him to continue to stay because he's Martel. And he is. And now that you know that, Chris, what are you gonna do about it? And then Martel goes on to say, at least you can find someone that's interested. Um, at least once you find someone that's interested, I'm thinking that you'll be like, hey, listen, as a friend, hey, Martel, I'm going to talk to the owners to see if I can get you 90 days to get out of this. When I tell you. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
I feel like Chris felt in this scene. Chris was biting his lip and shaking his head. I, you could tell he wanted to fire off on Martell's. Mm. You could tell he wanted to. But he was like, you don't think I've done that already? But they're not going to give you no damn 90 days. They want the house sold. And Martell's like, they ain't, they ain't fixing to kick me out. And Chris's like, yes, they will. And Martell's like, they can't come and kick me out. Are you? This. Y'all. I see why Martell cannot pass that bar. I mean, not bar. I see why Martell cannot pass that open book builder's test. Oh, he is dumb, dumb for real. I mean, for real, for real. This ain't no game. This dude is slow. Oh my goodness. He is so slow. Anyway, Chris tells him, yes, they can. Yes, they can. You're month to month. There's a contract on the house. And then Marsha, this ninja said, who's priority? As a friend, as a realtor, you ain't say, hey, Martell, listen, uh, do you need help looking for a property? And Chris was like, you out of your god mind and is. Chris, this mm, Negro is waxed out of his mind hello and i hope once you get him up out of here that you don't play around and move him up into something else because he has shown you who he is believe him okay this negro cannot be trusted oh he is so trifling and you can tell i mean it shows who did everything in that house to get them to the status that they were if it wasn't for melody he would still be out here probably allegedly still and trying to steal ATM machines or locked up some goddamn where or living off of some woman and having her take care of him because Marsha, not Marsha, the other Marsha, um, hotel don't want to work. He don't want to, he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to use and engage his own brain. It's like, what do you say it's safe and brain cells for, honey? What? I don't get it. Whew. I'm getting too worked up. Hold on. Let me drink some of my tea because, honey, mm mm. Mm mm. These people are not going to raise my blood pressure this season. Not going to happen. Back down. You don't know these people personally. Let's take it down a notch. Anyway. Whew. Martell goes on to say, Chris. I just asked you about a week and a half ago. Um, talking about, he asked him specifically, uh, do you have any properties? And Chris was like, I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything. And then Hotel has an nerve to go on to say, so what makes you think I can run out here in 30 days and find something for my kids and I, if you can't find anything? As a friend, he's wearing hard on that as a friend thing. Do you want me to just pack up and go to a hotel with me and my children? Or you don't care? Or you're just worried about the money? Negro, you are not Chris's responsibility. Chris is not married to you. You are not one of Chris's kids. You are a grown a man with five kids. That's your responsibility. You would not even let Melody get any of her stuff out of the house. Yet you want this man to be responsible for you and your grown behind and your children. Let Melody get the kids. They got somewhere to go. Melody has a big old nice house. So the kids are not going to be homeless. You're going to be staying in a hotel. And if you don't have anywhere to go, Guess what? Guess where those kids go with their mom? So get it together. Get a job trifling. Stop trying to run back and forth to Atlanta to try to be on this other show and stop trying to get up in all these women's faces. Get your nose in a book. Pass the doggone open exam. Do something for yourself for a change because Melody is no longer here to take care of you and to drag you along, okay? She has finally gotten rid of the dead weight. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so Chris is like, no, no, it ain't about the money. It's about my fiduciary duty 
to the seller. And it is. Chris has a legal responsibility to act solely in the best interest of that seller, of the per person who owns the house. It ain't about you. And then Martel will come back and say, I'm a client of yours too, though. Are you paying? Are you a paying client? Mm-hmm. Are you a paying client, Martel? Answer that. So why is it such a big deal? I mean, why are you harassing me? He goes into this childish, petty mode, talking about why is he harassing him. Negro, I'm trying to get you out of this house so that these people can sell their house. I'm trying to get you, you know, to understand that you do have to leave so that you don't come and find your stuff on the side of the street. I am being a great friend to you. I, child, I cannot. I cannot. I just... Oh, honey. Anyway, <laughs> these people are a mess. So Chris goes on to say, that is not the problem of the owner of the house. And it's not. He's like, okay. And Martel's like, okay, the thing is, I found a property. So why, why are we going through all this, Martel? What, boy? You just like to harass people and irritate the crap out of people, don't you? He probably ain't got nowhere to go. He's probably going over there to his mama's house. Anyway, Chris is like, so when you moving? I know that's right, Chris. And Martel is like, as a friend, here we go again. I would have told him, I'm not your damn friend, okay? I'm not your friend, so when you moving? Golly. He told me, as a friend, I would expect at least 90 days. And Chris was like, a couple of weeks. Two weeks. That has to happen. Two weeks. So I guess Chris put his foot down. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we go on to Kimmy and Maurice. I don't want to be here long because I am already so very sick of them. So I'm going to run through this real quick. They're out bike riding in the park for exercise because the doctor told Kimmy that exercise would help push her past being tired. So they pull over to have this boring... <laughs> So they pull over to have this boring dialogue, and Kimmy states that maybe they can invite Tisha and Marceau. The look on Maurice's face looked like he wanted no parts of that, and um, I don't blame him. Anyway, Kimmy brings up the luncheon in Tiffany and Stormy and the Black Expo, and she mentions that Marceau has been coy about the money and how Marceau asked Stormy for $100 the night of the event. Maurice states that they paid. Kimmy does what Kimmy do, and she goes into that stuck face, honey, because she ain't know nothing about the money coming from out of their bank account. Um, hello. Anyway, Kimmy asks, why would we pay? Why would anybody have paid when that was never the discussion? We all want to know that question, Kimmy. Can you find out and let us know? Anyway... Maurice is like, because it's an event, and Kimmy, ha Kimmy went on to say, half the vendors got in free, and that's when Maurice went into a stuck face. He was looking stuck and stupid, like, what? Yeah, uh-huh, sure enough, half of the vendors didn't pay, because he decided after seeing Stormy set up that people should pay, and they also realized that they had so many people there, they could possibly get some money to line their pockets. So now, they need to get people to pay. So then Kimmy goes on to say, the first few people that came, they weren't charging. Then they got so many, they had to start charging because the cost went up. What cost changed exactly, Kimmy? We want to know what cost changed. Because she's like, you didn't change the building, and they didn't. You didn't have no food, and they didn't. What was actually coming out of Tisha and Marceau's pocket that they had to charge other people $100? Ooh, good question, Kimmy. All of us want to know. Marceau, Tisha, can we get you guys on the line, please? Can you please come in? Come to the room and tell us why all of a sudden everybody had to pay. Because that's absolutely ridiculous. And quiet as kept, I believe that since this was an event on TV, that it was probably paid for by the show. The, the building anyway. Hello. So really, what did y'all come out of y'all pockets for? Except for maybe a little bit of advertisement that y'all did. Uh, hello. Anyway, Maurice goes on to say, I feel a way about why our spot was so small. If I paid the same amount as Stormy, I should have had the same size as Canvas. Anyway. <laughs> Child. Mar Maurice. 
go sit down somewhere. <laughs> but Maurice, what were you actually selling? What what were you selling, honey, that you needed that big spot? Um, I know that you have your credit business. What is it, the Credit One USA? Were you... I'm still waiting on the answer to that. What were you selling that you needed that much space? I'll wait. But while I wait, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what Kimmy had to talk about. Kimmy went on to say, I have disagreed with Stormy. Um, Kimmy went on to say that she disagreed with Stormy and Tiffany uh, about the luncheon, but she understood that particular part. I guess talking about the money part. And um, all, all I want to know is, Kimmy, did you? Did you really? And if so, did you say so in front of Tisha that you agreed with Tiffany and Stormy about the money part? Or did you just agree and only say it in front of uh, Maurice because you don't want to start no stuff with Tisha? Child, let me hurry up because it's starting to thunder here. Anyway, Kimmy talks about Tiffany's party and then mentions how her yoni egg fell into the toilet. Toilet. Yuck. Kimmy, you could some things you can keep to yourself, honey. I know that y'all reaching and y'all don't have a storyline, but you could have kept that. We we really didn't need to know about your yoni egg falling fall into the toilet. That's absolutely disgusting. She went on yada, yada, yada again with a decreased libido. So then Maurice goes on to say, it's mental, Kimmy. Oh my goodness. This dude here, it's like he's vying for that... This dude is a real douchebag because you had firsthand knowledge of everything that your wife has gone through. And considering that she was in the fight for her life and for this to be your concern this whole time, and this is what you're talking about, you being satisfied actually, child please, no, no thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm so sick of this storyline. I don't know what to do. Uh, either fix it or not. Because at this point, I don't care anymore. I don't know about y'all, but I don't care anymore. Because when people come at Maurice, Kimmy defends his BS. So let's move on. Because I, I just, I really can't with this situation with them. I really do believe that Maurice is vying for vice president spot of the He Man Hate a Woman Club. Okay? Because his brother has, I don't know, I think his brother and Martel um, or Hotel run neck and neck for president of the He Man Hate a Woman Club. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't get these men, uh, boys, dudes, guys. I don't, 